Welcome to another edition of AFL Today, Week 12 in Review. I'm your host, E Money, and what an exciting week it was. I think we're talking great upsets here. Number one, Chicago Rush lose at home. Who would have thought? Las Vegas won. Can you believe that? Taking down the Blaze. And of course, the LA Avengers take out the first place Georgia Force at home in Los Angeles. What an exciting week it was. Let's get right into it. All right, folks, game number one on the docket. Arizona Rattlers take a trip to Tampa Bay, and Tampa Bay wins again. They're fifth in a row. Can you believe it? Samuels and T.T. Tolliver, these guys keep doing it year after year after year. This uh, quarterback carousel has ended with Dietz with an 8 TD performance. So far, Markham's happy there. And Tampa Bay now, it looks like they're going to make the playoffs this year. Can you believe it? I wrote these guys off in week one, two, three, four, and five, I think. But leave it to Markham, proving me wrong, coming back strong. Arizona on the other side, I officially put the nail on the coffin. This team is done. They are going nowhere. Daryl Jones, of course, uh, an exciting electric return man. Also coughed up a key fumble that pretty much cost him the game in the third quarter. So things have gone from bad to worse in Arizona. And I don't know if Utah or Arizona are going to race to be the last place teams here the way Utah's playing. Move on. Las Vegas. Who would have thought Las Vegas won versus the Blaze? Now check this out. The Blaze were up 21 points. Here's the key. I don't know if Danny White understands or whatever, but Danny needs a new defensive coordinator. Danny's never been one for big on defense that I know of. He needs a new coordinator because the Blaze need help big time. Again, running a gun sent all kinds of offensive records. On the other side, sent all kinds of defensive negative records because these guys just can't play defense. Las Vegas, these guys are done, but they're playing for pride. And look out, Nick Rolovich is the next quarterback here in that world. Seven TDs, and this guy is fabulous, man. You got to hand it to him. Vegas not quitting. I would have thought all these guys would have just packed it in, but look out. Vegas with a big win, upsetting the Blaze. All right, next game on the docket, game number three. Let's talk about Columbus taking a trip to Colorado. Look out, Colorado, folks. These guys have won, I believe, four or five in a row. Solid defense this time. Solid defense. Caused four turnovers. And, uh, again, it is, we're talking about night and day here with uh, Columbus Destroyers. And Coach K, he's a big defensive guy, but he needs some help on the offensive side of the ball because these guys cannot turn the ball over like that. Uh, and again, it just goes so these, this team is hot and cold. They play Dallas very strongly, play Georgia strong. They've got, uh, I think they're 500 now, but these guys have got to win the games that they're supposed to win. And again, you cannot win games doing four turnovers like that because they could have had this one. So Columbus goes down again. And uh, Colorado, big team on the peak right now. I think Columbus will still make the playoffs, but nonetheless, Coach K has got to get this hot and cold uh, taken care of right now. All right, folks, next game on the docket. Nashville Cats take a trip to Chicago Rush and win 44-28. to Amazing these guys could beat the Rush at home where these guys have been invincible. And you were just waiting for this big fourth quarter rally. But check it out. They held... The uh, rush scoreless in the fourth quarter. Huge Cats defense. And I think the only negative side for the Cats is, again, just like Columbus, this is a very inconsistent team. One week they play fabulous. The next week, who knows? So, uh, again, you got to look at Sperduto. has got to figure out what's going on with this club, if he can turn around in time for the playoffs and get these guys to play out like this all the time. Uh, now, for the rush on the other side, again, Scipio was out. But I'm telling you, Duan Alfonso had a fantastic game. So you can't blame it on Scipio. I think... Uh, Again, it could be kind of that, hey, we peaked, and now let's get into cruise control. I think this is a good time for them to start losing. That way they can get uh, maybe even drop a few more games and then start picking up as the playoffs come. So they're in the playoffs for sure. They didn't clinch it this week, but uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. So uh, this, I guess, this is the time to get the losses out of the way, get these guys hungry again so they can make another run at the championship and get Scipio back, hopefully, in time for the playoffs. All right, folks, next game on the docket. Let's move on down the line. The Grand Rapids Rampage take a trip to San Jose, and here's a team just like, uh, we'll say, Chicago until uh, this weekend, is unstoppable at home. 69-44, to 44, and Grand Rapids could not just keep up. But here's the, let's talk about Grand Rapids, and the quarterback carousel continues. Adrian McPherson now has found a home in Grand Rapids. Not sure what they're doing with Bishop. Not sure if they're not too happy with Salisbury or what's going on, but uh, that Grand Rapids can, uh, again, carousel continues. And I don't know what's going on with Sparky over there and that whole crew. Kind of makes me wonder. San Jose side, got to hand it up to Greed. But the other plus for San Jose is no matter what receiver they seem to plug in, 
Uh, they have a replacement for Ben Nelson there. He's been out. And this guy's doing fantastic. So it's kind of like, hey, whoever you stick in, Greed finds, and scores touchdowns. So if you're San Jose, you got to be happy. These guys are peaking at the right time. Once again, it looks like another guarantee for a Western Conference championship. And we'll see how far these guys can get in the playoffs. All right, folks, next game on the docket. Georgia Force takes a trip to the LA Avengers and comes away with a loss. Can you believe it? 51 to 57. Here's the amazing part. LA led the force by 30 points at one point. Let the force get back in it late in the game. And I'll tell you, the Avenger defense without Damon Wheeler played fantastic and shut down Lee, Bergeron, and Jackson pretty much for three and a half quarters. And then towards the end of the game, they got sloppy, let them get back in the game. It was a nail biter towards the end, but uh, the Avengers pulled it off. And talk about a team, another inconsistent team. These guys are six and five, coming off the one of the worst losses of the year. Uh, last week at home against Tampa Bay and now to put in this performance hey I'll take it but uh, we got to get more of this stuff for us LA fans that moves uh, Los Angeles to six and five puts them in a spot, solid spot for the playoffs which is nice we'll see if we can finally get that first playoff win but they got to continue to be playing like that all right folks next game on the docket let's go KC Brigade takes a trip to New York and gets gunned down by Aaron Garcia KC 56 Dragon 62 and let me tell you something folks AG and Swain are back baby well Swain's always been around but AG is back and the Dragons are now probably the best 4 and 7 team out there they are starting to recover now from the early season woes AG's at the helm and these guys again could sneak in the playoffs and make some great things happen KC on the other side look at Philly out throwing 8 TDs almost made the comeback but just couldn't quite come close and uh, the Dragons stopped them right at the key time that they needed to so KC just again were out they were out willed by the Dragons to pull this one off KC still uh, with a winning record they got to be happy about that Dragons still trying to make something happen obviously in the playoffs all right next game on the docket let's talk about Orlando takes a trip to Austin and Austin the ship starts sinking even further Orlando 46 to 45 this is probably Orlando's fourth or fifth ugly win that they will take these guys trailed the entire game on the last play of the game they won it that moves them to a seven and four but I think Orlando is probably the worst seven and four team out there on the flip side the Austin ship is continuing to sink uh, I guess uh, Coach Skip there is probably really happy the way things have gone after they let him go. Of course, McPherson, uh, no love lost there as he watches this team go down to 3-8. and eight. And uh, this is, I believe, is the first year that Austin will not make the playoffs. And uh, they're going to have to start answering some questions over there. All right, next game on the docket. Talk about Monday Night Massacre, folks. The New Orleans Voodoo take a trip to the Philadelphia Soul, and I thought for sure the Voodoo was going to come away with this one, but they lose 34 to 78. That's right, that's not a typo. 34 to 78. The Soul got not only every bounce possible, but um, Graziani came back early. You could tell his shoulder was not 100%, but nonetheless, they dominated. And this is the difference that a leader makes. Again, this was a team you would have thought, man, these guys are horrible. Everything's falling apart. But Graziani's back in the mix, puts that leadership in, and these guys played phenomenal, and every bounce went their way. These guys, again, 78 to 34. It was, again, embarrassing if you're uh, on the voodoo side of the ball. All right, folks, let's move on now to the All Money Players of the Week. All right, folks, all money team players of the week. Let's break it down. Defense, psh, I'm giving it to the Philadelphia Soul. These guys outscored the voodoo on defense. Sacks, fumbles, interceptions. It was nonstop. And uh, these guys, didn't matter who was quarterback in the voodoo, uh, Philly was all over them. So got to hand it up to the entire defense. On the offensive side of the ball, I now I know the stats aren't impressive. I think it was seven completions. Uh, before those were for TDs, and that's Tony Graziani. Way to come back. Obviously wasn't 100%, but led the team. And I got to hand it to Tony, man. That's exactly what they needed. And also his backup, Leon Murray. Here's a funny one. This guy threw, I believe, three completions, two of those for touchdowns. So everyone feeling it in Philly. All right, let's move on to Iron Men of the Game. Excuse me, Iron Man of the Week, All Money Team, got a hand off to Lawrence Samuels, his 14th season. Everyone's talking about Andy Kelly, how old he is, 14th year season. Look at this guy, Lawrence Samuel, Iron Man, 14 years, still doing it. This guy's fabulous, had a key interception to win that game. Got to hand it off to Lawrence and what he's doing in Tampa Bay. All right, folks, that wraps up this edition of AFL Today. I'm your host, E Money. We're looking in a couple hours here to have Silas in studio, so looking forward to that. And until next time, God bless everybody. Everybody.